Uh, hi everyone, thank you very much for joining. I can see the attendees are uh, coming in, so uh, thank you very much for that. We're just we're going to start in about fifty, about sort of fifteen to twenty seconds. Uh, we've um, yeah, we've obviously got a lot of people arriving, so uh, yeah, we're going to start round about on time for um, yeah uh, to thank everyone who has arrived. can see we've got 150 registered for today so uh, yeah thanks again for everyone uh, coming i think we've got uh, we've got a, you know a range of different sectors on the webinar today in terms of both of those inside kind of architecture engineering construction uh, property renewable energy uh, as well as financial services um, accountancy and i'm sure i've, I've i'm sure i've missed some so uh, great to have a, a good representation across sectors um, who all have an interest in um, managing emails better Great, so we'll get started. So uh, today's webinar is on bringing law and order to the information management. Um, with, uh, I suppose, a particular link to some content we've produced recently uh, on the wild, wild west of information management. I don't know if anyone's office ever feels like that, uh, that wild, wild west, but we're going to be talking about that that today. Uh, just before we start, I just want to uh, do a little bit of housekeeping, which I always, always forget. Um, so there's a Q&A feature in um, there's a Q&A feature in the chat window, uh, oh, sorry, in, in the toolbar of Zoom. So if, you, if you've got any questions, please just put, please just put your questions in there and uh, we'll, we'll endeavor to answer them before the end of, end of the webinar. There's a couple of interactive parts. I appreciate lots of people have attended probably lots of webinars through, uh, through, the, through the pandemic since all of the events have, um, have gone, to, gone to virtual. Um, so I wanna try and make this as interactive as possible. And for importantly, uh, you to learn not only some Something about managing emails and information better, but also how other businesses address these challenges. So I'm going to uh, use the chat feature here in a couple of parts of the webinar. I just want to make sure all of that's working. So if you could type in hello to confirm you've received this. Uh, I've just put a message in to say hello, everyone. Uh, so if, if you can, um, yeah, if you can type in hello from there, that'd be much appreciated. Um, Okay, so um, I should probably start by introducing uh, who, who we are. Uh, my name is Jacob Wardrop. I'm one of the directors at Mail Manager. Uh, we're a uh, spin out of the Arab group, essentially, uh, which we'll be, be talking a little bit more about. And uh, I've got my colleague, uh, Guy, Guy Seward. Uh, so, uh, hi, Guy. Hello, Jacob stuff so uh, guys uh, another part of a commercial team here and spends his time working with businesses who are trying to get their people managing their information better so uh, he kind of speaks to people and experiences firsthand the pitfalls associated with not filing your information which we'll be talking about today as you can see from the topic it's designed to be a little bit little bit tongue in cheek so um if any if any if anyone's come for a really serious blue chip style you know corporate presentation you may be disappointed but if you haven't come for that then hopefully you'll think you'll find this is a really good use of your time we're we're intending to run this for about half an hour um so yeah please ask questions and thank you again for joining so i hope everyone could see my screen if anyone can't put in the chat facility. Um, it's probably not a lot I can do if you can't, but I'll certainly try and put, sort of turn it off and on again and that sort of thing if you can't. So um, in terms of today's agenda, what we're going to cover is the types of information filers in every business. And I think this is something which isn't talked about enough. You've all sat on lots of technology presentations, lots of sales presentations. You know, we, we give them out where we talk a lot about the uh, different features and different kind of modules of a certain, of any piece of software, any piece of technology, but we don't talk as much about the people who are using it. So we're going to talk about 
the people uh, who you want to file information better and the different types of uh, kind of people we see in a business uh, and hopefully some of that resonates with 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 with, you, with, with yourselves um, second what we're going to cover is quality management which is a big topic in the industry at the moment I mean I think it has been for, for years obviously but it's just kind of evolving um, as more and more news and and kind of uh, either uh, you know disasters or themes come to light and come in the news where uh, you know which are relevant to I suppose having standardized processes so we're going to talk about the role of email when it comes to quality management and other and other types of unstructured data. Um, we're then going to talk about uh, records management a little bit and I suppose how email, there's a case for email to be included in how you manage your records generally. I'm sure there's lots of people here who manage some things really, really well in your business and this webinar is not designed to tell you that any of that's broken. I think it's just email sometimes the kind of the uh, neglected cowboy in your IT strategy. So um, the final one is we're then going to talk about how to actually get people working in a slightly more standardized way. So if you've got some of the, some of the, the types of guys we're gonna talk about in your business, we're gonna talk about how to get them into line uh, for want of a better phrase. So um, I'm going to talk through some of the slides and then I'm going to pass over to Guy who's going to talk about the last point which is actually how we address some of the problems we're talking through today. Um, so I'll just have a quick check on questions. Haven't seen any 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 um, come in yet but please do put them in as we come through. Now um, this may be your first um, you know your first mail manager webinar you've attended. I think we've actually run kind of 10 or 15 through the through the pandemic with various speakers both from government from uh, different Different industries and one of the things we ask at all of these is what made you attend today and that's because we want to make these events as relevant and useful and the best use of your time ultimately so I'm going to launch a poll which should come up and I'll share the results of this as they come in um, in terms of what made you attend today I'm sure you received lots of emails from lots of companies and we really appreciate you first of all reading ours and then then registering um, so the options are you're just reviewing your general IT systems you'd like to hear about different ways of managing information. You've got colleagues who never file. If nobody's ticking that, then, you know, it's definitely, they're definitely being economical with the truth. Um, struggling with email overload or just interested in our app generally. So a bit of a mix of results, actually. Um, still a couple more coming in. So we've got about 30% are interested in managing information generally better. About 25%, uh, we've got about 150 registered for context. So we've got about 25% are struggling with email overload, which I suppose is just where you're getting hit with the sheer volume of emails. And if if anyone if anyone is uh, if anyone here doesn't doesn't look forward to opening up their inbox, then uh, you're certainly on the right web uh, the right the right webinar. But that that fourth point probably applies. So I'm just going to press end polling now, and you'll see the results. Um, they should disappear from your screen at some point. So I'm hoping they, that doesn't that doesn't appear as a kind of, uh, you know, intrusive window up for the rest of the webinar. But email overload and hearing how other businesses are managing information are the two, two top, top picks, as well as 18% have colleagues who never file. So uh, our thoughts are with you, but we'll certainly try and try and help you through that. So if I click on stop sharing, um, then that should have disappeared from your screen. Guy, sort of nod your head if that is, if that is the case. Thank you, Guy. So uh, the types of filers in every business. Now, um, I think if one of these stands out to you, then put it in the chat in terms of which one stands out, not to you, I suppose, more, more in, your, in, your, in your business. But this is, we think, the different types of people um, in a business and I suppose, the different the different uh, types of filers in in, a, in in every business in terms of their approach to managing information so there's normally a sheriff in chief that could be either a qa manager or an office manager or just a you know a, a very conscientious uh, director who who really kind of cares about uh, process effectively um so the sheriff could be any any kind of role really um but it's somebody who is consistently enforcing processes and making sure people are filing. So what I'm thinking there is your person who's making sure that the job files up to date, your drawings registers up to date, um, the important emails are filed at the end of the job and they're pointing out when people haven't done it. So I don't know, in our kind of world that's normally an MD or normally a principal kind of thing somebody you know slightly maybe a director who's fairly you know kind of IT IT savvy um, but often I suppose they're pretty good at telling people what to do and to file 
but they're often the worst filers themselves. So I don't know if anyone, I may, if I've offended any partners or principals on here, then apologies. But in our experience, that's kind of what, what we see. Uh, there's then a drunk uh, who is somebody who's got a completely unorganized, risky approach to information management. So if you've got any colleagues where you've, you know, kind of walked past their desk and you've seen, you know, 10,000 unread emails, that kind of thing, it's someone who's just like, put it in the bin, put it anywhere, and I'll try and find it. I'll be able to find it some one way or another. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to find it. I'm just going to bury my head in the sand and hope that I can find it. And those guys do represent some level of risk because nobody knows how important someone is until they're trying to find it. And when you're trying to find it, we all know that's pretty, you know, that, that, that can be pretty, pretty, pretty worrying. Um, so then a tycoon who's your kind of free spirit maverick who just refuses to follow regulations. So I actually come across a lot of consultants and architects and a slightly more design orientated kind of um, audience, maybe, um, well, nobody likes filing, but they may be more prone to just not filing at all because, you know, either they don't see it as their job or it's just completely un, 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 uninteresting. But I think the main, the main thing is they just want to be getting on with other stuff, whether it's design, the creative side and the kind of records management side is just not important. I don't know if anyone, you know, if anyone thinks they've got a tycoon, then put tycoon in the chat. I'm sure lots of, I'm sure lots of you have. And then there's a gunslinger. So the gunslinger is your champion of information management. So that, I don't know, it could be like a BIM manager, a BIM lead, uh, or or a, or, or a project manager who you know keeps really consistent records. And I'm sure that there's one person in every business who's really OCD about filing their inbox. So if you've, if anyone's got more than one, then please, you know, put that in. We'll, we'll unmute your audio and very happy to have you share that experience. I can see James Miller says you've got all these types. So that's good, James. Definitely on the right, definitely on the right, right, uh, the right webinar, if I can learn to speak. Um, so, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so the next one is resistance to filing from outlaw-like employee filers. So these are some of the reasons you may, Amanda says she's a mix of all good stuff, Amanda. We all have good days and bad days, that's okay. Um, so uh, these are some of the reasons, I say reasons, you, you, you could call them excuses, I'll call them reasons why people might not file. So one could be, I don't have time to file. And I, I, don't, I don't just mean emails there. If you've got people who issue drawings out and don't update the drawings register, or if you've got people who just don't file anything at all, or they, do, you know, they keep their own little kind of filing cabinet. Um, sometimes there are guys who will say it takes too long to file. And then the third one, which can actually come from I, you know, an, I, an IT team sometimes. So it's all backed up anyway, so it doesn't matter. So they're some of the challenges with getting people to file. And it doesn't really matter. To some degree, you could use any piece of technology and you'll never convince the entirety of your of your business. I realize I'm saying that as somebody who works for a technology company, but I kind of fundamentally believe that to be true. I think the last point is probably the one I think is kind of, I take the most um, resistance to. Uh, and we speak to, and I speak to a lot of IT teams who in the past have kind of said, well, it's all backed up anyway, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. And I think what they sometimes fail to appreciate is actually we need records and information by project. So all being backed up somewhere, which only one or two people can access by person, isn't that helpful. And if anyone's on here who can access all of your emails, you know, on any project across everyone within a couple of clicks, then you've absolutely, you, you know, you've nailed it. But in our experience, that's pretty rare uh, and having it backed up doesn't help with that. So, yeah, three reasons. are I don't have time to file. It takes too long to file. If anyone's got a new reason, which isn't on there, I've just tried to pick the top three. So if anyone's got a new reason, please put that in and we'll include it in you know, future content presentations. Uh, you'll We talk about this kind of stuff on our podcast as well. So if anyone's got any other kind of excuses, reasons for not filing and not following process, then, you know, please, uh, please put them in. Um, so quality management and unstructured data. So one question I suppose I've got for everyone on this webinar is how does email feature in your quality management procedures? Um, the reason for that is most of the time it doesn't. I think, some I think there's best case scenario, someone has a QA process and email is mentioned in there, just like any other record of a project, any other piece of correspondence, it, email should be filed against the project. And I think best case scenario, we've you've written something down on email management i think probably the obvious next step from that is are people for are people following that procedure 
Um, in our experience, you know, that's pretty, pretty rare because of the volume of emails people get. Uh, and then the first, I suppose the first, the first case is actually people who, who kind of just don't, you know, they haven't really ever thought about how email features in their, in their QA. Um, this influences a number of things. PI, uh, you know, premiums certainly do make a big impact for any, for anyone on here who's working in the kind of built environment. Um, or even kind of outside the built environment, really, your insurers will take an interest in how your records are managed and how easily you can find that. So if you have a claim, how easily you're able to substantiate that. And some people can do that better than others. If you've ever worked with somebody who's constantly putting you on a back foot through reminding you of what you have and haven't said, they've probably got some sort of system which is allowing that or an insanely good memory. Um, so the second one is the Grenfell Tower. So, it, uh, you know, a difficult, I suppose, not to mention that in this context because of the amount of um i suppose just just um uh what's the what's the word i'm looking for but errors uh, you know for, for want of a stronger phrase um in the document control and record management on that you know in, in that particular in that particular case and i think it's probably lots of people have had lots of conversations on correspondence and in emails and probably thought well it's only really when someone else is reading them out when you're kind of thinking oh god what you know why did i say that um which is pretty pretty obvious so where there's when projects go wrong emails become really important and you want more gunslingers than drunks ideally um so uh, the final point is ISO quality management. So ISO auditors are increasingly becoming more and more interested in where your information is filed. I think 10 years ago, you used to have somebody come in and they tell you what projects they were going to pick on from a QA point of view, and you'd be able to make sure that those projects are, are well organized and that sort of thing. Now they're taking a much bigger interest because of, you know, the, I suppose, the, you know, the, the things what happen when this stuff goes wrong. So I think one takeaway is if you're in, if you have ISO accreditation and you want to be able to keep it and you want to be able to keep it easily, then whether you use Mail Manager or use anything, incorporating email into your quality management guidelines is really essential it's just like any other record on a project if you can get sued for if you can get sued for not having it or if you can get sued on the you know on the grounds of a content of an email then it's probably important you're able you're able to find it um, so in terms of the next slide um, why correspondence must be a must be part of complete record management so i think this is probably just one thing which i was interested to hear about i suppose what is in, I think one thing to think about is what's in my inbox. Because at the moment you have a thousand emails in your inbox, 2000 emails, 10,000 emails. They don't all pertain to one project. They don't all pertain to one thing. They pertain to 10, 100 different things and different topics. And it's really important naturally that you're able to find some of that. Not all of it is important. You know, the email kind of saying, you know, there's cakes in the kitchen, that sort of thing. I suppose when we used to be in the office, um, are less so. So not every single email is important, but if you think about what's in your inbox, generally we see, you know, emails relating to budgets, uh, disputes, uh, poor productivity. If that was, I've, I've negated to put, to put, put a space in there. Um, project client delays, variations, which can sometimes, I suppose, you know, you're not really kind of bothered what's in someone else's inbox until they've left the company. And that's when it starts to really hit home in terms of, God, I hope, hope John was organized you know I hope, uh, I hope in his last last few months he didn't he didn't he didn't just bury his head, didn't just bury his head in the sand which I think you know is can be you could argue is human nature um, so I think if there's a I suppose really I think a thing to a, a, a consideration lots of businesses we speak to make is what type of information is in our inboxes and is it commercially sensitive so might not be a contract, but it might be something which refers to a contract. But I think the, the main thing is like probably all of you on here, you can go onto a project and you can see what um, what the deadline is for that project or what materials are being used on that project or what's the quote on this project or what's the contract. But if you want to see why there's that deadline or why the project's delayed or why you're using a certain material on site, that's all in emails normally. So um, that's just, I think, something to think about and probably a case for email to be just included in all in and taken as seriously as any other piece of correspondence. Um, in terms of standardising filing across the business, we're going to talk about how Arup have done this. Um, 
that this kind of goes, there's a bit of a three step process, I think, to doing this. And it none of it starts with technology. It starts with agreeing the importance of filing. And I think if you're not prepared to kind of mandate filing across a project team, then you probably need to stop and kind of think about why you're doing it. Um, because you need to agree that email is important and email is, and it's important to file it. Um, second point is managing information and filing information needs to be part of the process, not another process. So if any of you get to the end of a week and try and file emails or that sort of thing, or you know, on a Sunday night, you're filing emails, that is a process designed to fail and will get inconsistent adoption. So we believe it's important to incorporate filing as part of every workflow, not create another one. Um, and machine learning is coming into our lives with most of what we do, phones, you know, uh, timesheets, various apps we, we're using. And our app have kind of identified that actually we can learn and incorporate machine learning when it comes to uh, trying to automate the filing process of where information should go. So I'm going to just move on in terms of uh, this is a typical business. We think it's Arab's business in terms of the different silos of their information. So outside of just emails, what other silos do we have? It, I would imagine for some of you on this webinar, we've you've got Outlook emails, you know, you've got emails and Outlook, I'm guessing. Uh, you've probably got a file server where documents are stored and that sort of thing. You've probably got somewhere where images are stored. Maybe they're on some people's phones as well. Um, there's maybe a job costing system for timesheets. Um, you could have started using SharePoint in Teams. So there's probably some project stuff in Teams now. Arup use ProjectWise, which is a common data environment. Um, as And then you could have site offices with their own filing structure and their own approach to information. I suppose my point is that how many times is a project's name referenced across different systems? And typically it's referenced across your file storage, your finance system, your collaboration system, Microsoft Teams, as well as kind of site photo data capture, which is seven or eight times, which just creates this kind of silo mentality, meaning if there's ever a dispute on a project, I'm going to have to go back and look at six, I can't, sorry, I can't count, seven different places, um, which, and we haven't even mentioned stuff like WhatsApp, which I'm sure has got things in there, which you, you know, you've, you've got some level of concern over. So in terms of how Arup addressed this, we identified um, really that there was a problem in the company, and that was directors felt that if if there was an issue on a project and it got to court and you know we had to retrieve information we could probably do it but it'd be quite concerning and very reactive so it'd burn up a lot of time and a lot of frustration the directors also identified that project teams were regularly having to cover their backs and again that was pretty difficult and some people could do that better than others um, fee earners also felt that they were wasting a lot of time when it came to email. So getting back from the holiday, it's like two, three days just to catch up on, the, on their inbox, which is all unproductive, unproductive time. So, and I think I, I reckon regardless of what sector you're in, Outlook's probably the one place you spend a lot of time during a day compared to other systems. So Arup were concerned about risk as well as just how much time people are wasting looking for stuff really. Um, from a kind of per, a people point of view, we had all different types of people who who did file didn't file um in some ways it didn't really matter because you know we had no one version of the truth on a project because filing was so inconsistent um in terms of uh, i suppose our aim we wanted project teams to be able to file uh, and fi sorry find any email on any project without wasting time filing so we wanted everyone to become our gunslinger everyone to become our champion of information management and we wanted our worst filer to be just as good as our best one which you know we do believe that we've got as close as you can possibly get to uh, to achieving that um so Arup couldn't, the Arup decided to go and cre um, create their own piece of software, uh, which is Mail Manager. Um, they actually, you know, initially just created it for themselves because they couldn't find anything which could address this problem. Everything else they'd looked at was expensive, clunky, people wouldn't use it. So they did, when they created their own, it was actually just for our architects and our engineers. It's never been, you know, it's never been developed as something to be sold as a commercial product. But the good thing from your point of view is this has been designed by people who live and breathe projects every day. Um, um, and it's now used by one in four architects in the UK and six out of the top 10 engineers, six uh, of the top 10 engineers world, worldwide. Um, and this I've got here, some of our clients. So uh, we do obviously, because Arup are an engineering business, we do, you know, have a, you know, we've had some particular success in that field, um, but we also work in retail, 
uh, higher education, property, uh, companies like Savills, Use Mail Manager, uh, as well as companies like the University of Sydney as well. So a real mix. But one thing which draws all of these businesses together is they care about how stuff's filed and they care what people do with an email once they've read it. Um, I can see Naomi's just said, filing is delegated to non-technical people who don't understand a project and save all documents into a top level folder system. That's a great point, Naomi. We'll, we'll kind of, I think that's, yeah, I suppose your non-technical people who are filing for you at the moment are probably your, your gunslingers. So we'll talk about how we can maybe add something to, to kind of what they already do. Um, the problems we solve, I'd be interested if any of these apply. I think I've got another poll here, which, um, which is a poll on the different types of information filers. So that's probably one I should have ran earlier, but bear with me. So the problems we solve for businesses are information being locked in people's inboxes, risk of losing and being unable to find information. That's the kind of importance of being able to retrieve it. Wasted time searching, as well as staff feeling overwhelmed by filing emails. I'm going to launch a poll to see what type of filers you have in your business which is linked to this so just please put that in and then we'll talk to you about how you can actually get people in line and get people filing that's probably a good time for me to pass over to guy to talk about how we address some of your drunks tycoons gunslingers and sheriffs Thank you, Jacob. Uh, hey guys, thank you for joining. Um, as Jacob said, my name's Guy and I'm gonna be showing you Mail Manager today. Now, I'm just gonna share my screen to do so. Jacob, if you could stop sharing yours, I'd be grateful. And while he's doing that, um, I must warn you, last week I, um, ah, Jacob, I think you need to make me host if that's okay. Um, last week, I broke my elbow, uh, so please do forgive any uh, spelling mistakes that I make in my emails, etc. Um, it's useful because it shows you just how easy it is to use Mail Manager with, with one hand. Thank you, Jacob. Okay. We, didn't, we didn't do it to him as a punishment for not filing. <laughs> so i hope you can see my outlook there just to recap the the four types of email filers that we think are in every business you've got the sheriff who's maintaining law and order you've got the drunk uh who's unorganized risky chaotic you've got the tycoon who refuses to follow regulations and the gunslinger the champion of information management if you follow my mouse this is mail manager up here it's a very simple add-in that turns all four types of people into gunslingers. It's these three buttons and these drop downs, but generally people are only gonna use these buttons. I'm gonna show you how I file my emails and then I'll take you to the search tool and show you how you can go about finding those emails. Mail Manager acts as a bridge between everyone's individual inboxes and your filing environment. That is probably a server or SharePoint, or something like Procore. Let's show you how, how, how it gets there. So looking at this email from Aisha, I'll open it up. It's about the Gensler project. Now, I've already spoken to her on the phone. I don't need to reply. After reading it, if I was the drunk or the tycoon, I'm probably gonna leave that in my inbox. If I'm the gunslinger, I'm probably gonna drag and drop that somewhere. And if I'm the sheriff, I just want it filed. I'm gonna close it. Instead of moving on to the next email, I'm greeted with this prompt. This is what gets people filing. This is what drives consistency, turns it into habit, gets everyone working as a gunslinger. It's using artificial intelligence to help me file and it's clever. It learns where I file my emails from different people and tells me where they should go. It is scanning for project numbers and project names, see if it can pick up further clues, but Arab realized can't rely on external companies to follow your protocols with project numbers. Can't rely on people to include the words in there or, or, or spell them correctly. So if it relied on specific details like that, you might get it wrong. So it's thinking to itself, where has Guy filed emails when speaking to Aisha? And gives me options at the top of the list. It's picked the right one, it's Gensler, so I'll file it. That goes to two places. One is the server or SharePoint or Procore, et cetera. So the rest of the team will be able to find it using the search tool. And the next is a new subfolder in your Outlook called Filed Items. That's so that you've got full functionality in Outlook. It, it looked like it just disappeared, but it didn't, it moved. 
we like to keep your inbox streamlined as a to-do list as opposed to a messy filing cabinet something that a tycoon would use now looking at this email from aisha same person same project annoyingly she hasn't mentioned the word gensler she hasn't mentioned the project number associated with it mail manager doesn't rely on those specifics and it will still pick up that's what we're working on because it remembers i could file it like so or i could select it and file it up here but we found with these manual steps the gunslingers are the only ones that are going to do that the drunks the tycoons they need a nudge and that's why we developed the prompt for that exact purpose now most people i speak to don't file their sent emails even though quite often the ones you send are more important than the ones you receive particularly if you're giving instruction or advice on a project um Arup thought what if we could just file by replying because you'd have to be a very dedicated filer to send an email go into your sent items drag and drop i'll tell ben to go ahead with the new plans it's two words but the sheriff needs this filed because they're two words that I might need to rely on one day. So I'll send it. Prompt comes up again. This time, different project folder. I'm talking to a different person. Send and file. That files my email from Ben and my response. Two in one without giving it too much thought. That's the prompt. It's very simple and it's really good at getting people to file. Now, I'm sure you've got you're, you're thinking you've got some people in your company, drunks and tycoons, that might give a little bit of pushback to that. And hey, it's a change. It's a, it's a change in behavior. With Mail Manager, it becomes quickly apparent why, to the individual using it, it's useful to file emails into the search tool. This is up here. It's the magnifying glass. And when I speak to our clients, uh, this is the part they'd miss. And we think it's the unique bit. It's a Google-like search for your project emails. If you have a look in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, we've got 217,000 emails that have been filed in my company. Some of those I'm involved in, majority I'm not, across lots of different projects. Let's say I had to find an email that mentioned a specific word. Um, a project's been completed, after that point, customer comes back and says, we did not ask you to use mahogany as a material. However, I know there's an email somewhere that mentioned that word that, that, that will prove my point. So once again, one-handed, apologies if I misspell this. I'm just gonna type in mahogany and it pulls up one email out of over 200,000. The search has been tested, works in the functionality that it can search through a million emails in two seconds. Should never take more than a couple to find what you're looking for. Now, I admit that I cheated there uh, because I knew that only one email out of 200,000 mentioned the word mahogany. You're not always going to have specific information like that. So let's find a more generic email. I'm looking for an invoice. Um, I wasn't sent it myself, so I don't know who the individual was who, who sent that email. I know that it was in the last year. So I'm going to go to the top left hand corner to the date range, change that to a year. Bottom left hand corner again, we're at 77,000 emails. Still too many to search through. So I'm going to use the keyword invoice. And we're down to two and a half thousand. Uh, it was attached, it was an attachment. So I'm going to go to here and click yes. Down to 500 emails. And I don't know the name of the person, I know the name of the company they work for, and I know that's in the email address. So I'm just going to type that in. And we're down to one email again. A few simple steps, limited information. Your, your sheriffs and whoever might need to find an email can rest assured that everyone in the team, no matter how good they were at filing before, would have been siphoning these in to the right place. Then a question coming, Guy. Uh, how, do, how are confidential emails managed, such as emails with monies involved? Um, so yeah, well, what do you do then? File them or not file them? That's the stuff we want to keep in our inbox. Yeah, sure. So um, good question. We'd say probably you want to file those. It sounds like they'd be commercially sensitive, and you and you and you definitely want them looked after. But you don't necessarily want the whole team to look at those financial emails and, and financial documents. So 
Mail Manager will automatically mirror the permissions you have set on your server or SharePoint. That happens, as I say, automatically. So if I can access a folder on the server, then I can file into it and search through it, through it um, for emails. If not, then I won't be able to. For that reason, lots of our clients will have two locations to file into per project, Project A and Project A Confidential. Yeah, great point. So having, um, there's a couple of a couple of a couple of answers, but having guys right, having a folder and file for restricted access on a project is a really good good idea because you you want, to, you want to be able to find it. If you have personal emails, it's also important that you have a personal emails area, um, which you know if you've got stuff about holidays and you know that sort of thing, you, you're able to put that in there. But having a um, you can control that if you want everything to be filed centrally. But generally, there's a case to have a place to file your personal emails and a place to file your business, but confidential restricted ones. Um, another question coming from Robert Westcott. Thanks, Robert. Is what if you read an email but don't want to deal with it straight away? So, Guy, what do you what do you think? Uh, yeah, we've all got to the office one morning, read an email, and not had the courage to reply to it till the afternoon. Uh, for that reason. By default, I mean, this is a possibility, but by default, I can preview the email without being prompted. We think that's important. I get a prompt when I open an email and close it, or every time I send an email. And we find that instills the habit because we're constantly sending emails. Me personally, I don't actually open my emails up when I, when I deal with them. And if I'm not going to reply, I'll right click and file it that way. There's one other... Uh, point to mention which is definitely used across Arab where which is when if you if if, uh, if guy opens up a prompt again for this Melanie Sags email um, in the kind of just uh, if we click close there in the right hand side where it says after filing you're able to append the file date and time so if you've received an email you want to be able to dip in and out of it through the day you don't want to get the prompt each time then guys at Gensler Arab are filing that but they're just putting the they're, they're basically filing it so it's in your inbox says the date and time it's filed, but it's also filed centrally. So if someone gets hit by a bus or if um, you know they, they leave the company, maybe less disastrous, uh, you're still able to you're still able to find it. Um, another question coming from Brian, really good one. Brian, thank you. Uh, so after you find the email you're looking for in the search window, when you open it, does it open in Outlook or via some other window? Can you show us how it looks? So yeah, definitely. Good question. Yeah, great question. So in the search tool, we're just looking at the metadata of these emails. We're looking at the time it was received or sent uh, and, and, and the contents of. If I want to open this email up and action it, then all I need to do is right click, open. That will then go ahead and speak to the server and open it up. Let's see how good my internet connection is. There's... The other, there's been another, yeah, so if, yeah sorry. Go ahead, Jacob. So um, in answer to the question, uh, Brian, uh, it opens up in the Outlook window, so that means if you want to reply to it by, from that, you know, from that, um, you know, for, uh, from that point forward, you're able to do that. Um, another question, which is a couple of questions, which has come in, Guy, if you um, just go to a, you know, a folder. Um, Amy's asked to actually kind of see an example of it in the project folder, which uh, you know is relevant. Uh, Lars has said he's probably the drunk. I love chaos. So, good man, nice. Um, Wayne. Uh, how do you handle reading emails on a mobile phone? I don't want to file until I, but I don't want to file until I get into the office on my laptop. So yeah, good, good, good question, Wayne. A um, couple of sort of ways to deal with that. I think is it, you know, there's we see different approaches to managing emails, you know, remotely. Um, it's probably the kind of thing we'd cover on a slightly more detailed demonstration. But in this scenario you've mentioned, there's a very simple answer, which is how do you handle emails? Uh, how do you handle emails once you've read them on your phone, but you don't want to um, file them? It's basically that you, re you read them and you, you kind of discard them until you're in the office. And then when you go to read them again in the office or go to reply to them, you'll be prompted or you can just kind of proactively um, do it. So there's no, no change as far as that's concerned, unless you, you kind of want something slightly more um, arduous uh, and uh, forceful. Uh, another question from Lars, which says, Lars says, how are filed emails protected against deletion so yeah really good question really comes down to where they're being filed to so if you're filed we file a lot of sharepoint for example and there's rules in place to stop us deleting from certain folders it just means we're not able to do it 
basically. So it comes down to setting the right parameters of against your folders and you know uh, the different permissions you had. So I hope that I hope that helps. Um, uh, Jacob, if I if I take uh, Amy's question, I think I think her name is Amy uh, about looking yes, at that sorry. in an actual yeah. project folder. Um, I imagine you've got a similar setup to this. You guys watching, you might have folders for reports, photos, drawings, contracts for mail manager to work. And this is the same on things like SharePoint. All you need is that extra subfolder called emails, and within we save them in their native Outlook format. Just like I open up that email there, it means you don't change any information in it if you need to use it in court. Um, now, you'll notice a, a code. When you file an email with Mail Manager, it applies a code because we run the risk that the same email is gonna get saved over and over again. So um, we apply the code of date it was sent and the time, name of sender, subject line. That means you can have 10 people filing the same email, only one copy gets saved. Another Stuff. important point, actually, we oh. don't host your data. Um, that's all in your company infrastructure, which is a really important thing to note because it means you won't ever have to spend time or money extracting your own data from us in the future if you wanted to take it out because we never had it. Good stuff. Um, final question from Robert, uh, mindful of everyone's time. So final question from Robert, which is, what stops rogue employees just deleting emails they think are too difficult to deal with, uh, which is a... It's either it's either very realistic or very cynical, but we'll uh, we'll go we'll go with realistic. So um, uh, maybe they are leaving. I think I think it's a valid point to sort of say what do people do in their last few months of being with a company? I think that is a concern. So um, the answer to that is that you disable the opt out options, such as the send only one, meaning people can't you 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 know they can't file their emails personally and they also can't if they're sending anything it, it has to be filed basically um so the answer to that is that you you give them a slightly different um setup of mail manager meaning they have to file the other thing is for using the um search feature of mail manager you're able to identify who isn't filing which is really helpful so you, you're able to kind of use that to identify the non-filers in your business um right uh, one more question Brian has asked a question saying, do the filed emails end up in SharePoint or on the server rather than in Exchange? Great question. They end up where you want your data to be filed, Brian. So if you want your data to be filed into SharePoint, they'll be filed into SharePoint. If you use a file server and you want your emails to be filed onto the job in your server, they'll go there. They'll still be in your inbox, so you've got the best of both worlds. Um, but it's really important that all of your emails get filed to a central place, which is part of your corporate kind of risk strategy, really. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's that. Um, that. One question is coming from Lars saying, but filing to SharePoint creates another place to incorporate in your backup strategy. How do you strive to achieve long-term access to archived emails? So yeah, I mean, it's an important point, Lars. I'd probably say that emails should be filed against a project. So if a project's in SharePoint, they probably should be there now. If a project isn't in SharePoint and you're filing to a file server, then file them to a file server. Kind of one takeaway from this short demo is that Mail Manager doesn't really um, care where something's filed. You can file it into Office 365, SharePoint, you know, Teams, or a file server. It's really important that it gets filed, and you, you, you know, the, the guys who aren't filing now, they actually kind of do file. So um, yeah, that's 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 that. So probably if I take over the screen, guy, um, I'll just return to presentation um, to finish off. So um, great to see so many questions come come in here. I mean, some of I think the summary of what we're talking about is number one is people not doing their own thing when it comes to email, which I think is really really critical. And for years, people have just managed emails in the same way, and they've never paused and thought how am I managing it? How could I do it better? How important is this? Um, so I've done a Q&A, but I suppose the last thing is just the effect of doing this. I think we're naturally all interested in A, cost, B, return, and C, will people use it? I hope we've answered C today. Uh, and I think the next step is probably a more, you know, a, a, a conversation with your business on if this is, if this might be relevant for you. And if it is, I suppose, you know, how would you even go about starting looking at something like this? So I think it probably starts with a fairly informal kind of conversation around the costs and how it compares to what you do at the moment. So, you know, we'll be in touch uh, with the different people on this webinar to kind of understand more about that, really. Uh, if any of you would like more information on cost, please put in the chat 
facility just yes please and we'll, i'll make sure that we that we uh, kind of contact you as a priority um we've done some analysis with other businesses uh, from kind of 25 employees and upwards really i mean we've got lots of businesses who are less than 25 employees who use mail manager 10 anyone above five really um but there's been some return on investment analysis done on on some firms which uh, are, are 25 and over as well as another one with a 50 employee firm so in essence by centralizing where information is and making it easy for people to find there's an opportunity to save three hours per person per week. And this varies across the company, but if you're a project manager, responding to queries, responding to telephone calls, and you're having to prepare for meetings, finding information is really, really critical. If you're a director, you're chasing, and you're ever chasing stuff that you like invoices, or you're ever kind of going back to an old project, or there's ever a problem, and the buck stops with you, then I think the cost is greater than, the time, than any amount of hours you can save. But I think the biggest thing is just thinking about how much time people spend in their inbox. And I think it's, it's what we've always done, so we've never questioned it. So it doesn't feel like a waste of time. If we increase, if we introduce a new timesheet system and it's four extra clicks, we know nobody's gonna use it because that feels like a waste of time. But your inbox is just what we've always done. We've just always done it and it doesn't feel like a waste of time. But there's a massive opportunity and a massive return from converting your inbox from a filing cabinet to a productive to-do list. And if you ever want to leave the office on a Friday and have a to-do list and not a filing cabinet, then you know it, it's worthwhile considering how you manage emails. So um, that's it really from us. Uh, we've run over slightly, so apologies for that. Thank you very much for everyone's time. I appreciate lots of you are gonna be working from home and juggling, uh, if you're anything like me, juggling the sort of the challenges of um, you know home life, childcare, and all that, sort of, all that sort of thing. So really appreciate you taking time out of your, uh, of your day to attend this and we look forward to speaking to you in the future um, guy thank you very much for your enthusiasm and uh yeah th thanks again everyone